Madam Chair, members of the committee, uh, Russell Brown, I'm the Executive Director for the Washington Association of Prosecuting Attorneys. I uh, was invited, or our association was invited to talk about our opposition to youth courts. Uh, and I just wanted to clarify up uh, initially, our association isn't necessarily opposed, <clears throat> nor are we opposed necessarily to the bill. We do have a couple of uh, particular uh, prosecutors who expressed some concern, I think, is where the opposition came from. I've actually uh, handed out a letter that came from Todd Dowell out of Kitsap County. Uh, and he expresses some uh, uh, some concerns that I wanted to share with you because I think that's uh, where this kind of arises from. <clears throat> Number one, I think one of the significant concerns about the current bill is that it uh, appears to place juveniles uh, that would originally be under the juvenile jurisdiction into adult court. Uh, and historically, at least uh, over the last few decades, juveniles are treated different, differently. And we continue to see that difference kind of increase. So taking juveniles who are currently under the exclusive jurisdiction of juvenile court, which has protections and provisions uh, for diversion and sealing uh, records and placing them under the jurisdiction of adult courts where there is not the uh, core rehabilitation focus is big picture. One of the reasons I think Todd is concerned about what youth court, what this bill uh, proposes to do. Uh, number two, functionally transferring juveniles into the jurisdiction of adult court typically happens in very, very rare cases. Uh, juveniles end up in adult court for very, very bad things, typically murder, violent crimes. Um, so it isn't a normal process to see someone under the jurisdiction of a juvenile court end up under the supervision of someone in an adult court. I, I think lastly, juvenile court actually has a youth court provision. When this uh, law was entered in 2002, the original draft of the youth, youth court bill only anticipated uh, juvenile court participation. Uh, and so it wasn't until sometime later in the process uh, of that bill's uh, life cycle that they entered in the 16 and 17 year old um, who were exclusively under the jurisdiction of adult court. And the reason the 16, 17 year old infractions fall under the exclusive jurisdiction of adult courts is because they have driver's licenses. And so this body has felt that if you have a driver's license, we're going to leave you then in adult court. You're old enough and mature enough to drive. You're old enough and mature enough to uh, have adult court uh, jurisdiction for those 16 and 17 year old driving related and traffic infraction type cases. Um, and so I think, uh, I think those are some of the major reasons that Todd uh, Dowell expressed the concerns um, while I don't know if there's another mechanism to do what the bill intends to do rather than moving them from the exclusive jurisdiction of juvenile court into or under the supervision of municipal or adult court. Um, but it appears that uh, there are other avenues that are currently available to do that without moving them to adult court. Morning, Madam Chair. My name is Mike Fenton. I'm the Juvenile Court Administrator from Thurston County, and I'm here representing the Washington Association of Juvenile Court Administrators. And uh, I would like to, to echo the, the comments made by the prosecutor and further state that, you know, our initial analysis of this is this is a solution without a problem. Um, as previously stated, Currently, we have the capacity to address this through the diversion process within our <laughs> juvenile court system. Um, I believe that we are better positioned to address those youth issues as we do that all the time. We have the resources, we have the community partnerships to address um, uh, issues relating to uh, all juvenile justice related matters. Um, so I, I think we're better equipped to, to deal with these issues. Um, I, I think for us, the, 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 the biggest concern, frankly, is in terms of uh, the records and the public access to those records. We currently have a mechanism within the Juvenile Justice um, Code and, and Act to have diversion records um, be sealed, be destroyed, and, and are not publicly available. I'm not sure of what ability uh, the district or municipal courts will have 
to maintain confidentiality of those records. Um, my understanding is that there's some provision for, and I think that we'll, we'll hear more about that in a minute after a period of time, um, but that is a concern, um, uh, and we believe that those records should be re should remain confidential um, as they currently are under our current structure. Um, we, you know, as, as stated, these kids um, uh, belong in the juvenile system. We've made um, efforts over the last several years to keep kids out of the uh, adult system uh, when appropriate, and this is just another example of where we need to maintain uh, jurisdiction with these these cases. I will say, with all of that said, I think that there, you know, there potentially is room for some level of compromise here. Um, I think that. Um, Juvenile courts should retain exclusive jurisdiction of these matters for all the reasons that we've stated. Uh, if there is some mechanism by which that uh, we can coexist with the, the district or municipal courts in terms of a shared jurisdiction with some of these cases in areas where, in local jurisdictions, where that might be doable, um, I think that that would be something that, that might be uh, a considered compromise. I don't know that that's going to exist across the state. Um, um, but we would object if, the, if, if it were to transfer exclusive jurisdiction over to those courts, um, but allow the possibility that a, a shared uh, or coexisting um, jurisdiction with these cases uh, in, in areas where that's uh, agreed and appropriate to do. Thank you. Madam Chair, good morning. My name is Courtney Witten, and I'm an attorney from Spokane, and um, part of my practice um, includes um, my law partner and I are the prosecutors for the city of Cheney, um, though I'm not here in that capacity. And so we are volunteers with the Cheney Youth Court, and I would just like to explain to the committee a little bit about how youth court works. Um, to us, it's an opportunity for these kids to um, learn about um, the criminal justice system and take part in it. Um, and it's a way to keep them out of juvenile court and then adult court is ultimately our goal. Um, the intent of this bill is never to give um, original jurisdiction to the district and municipal courts and the youth courts. Youth courts are always uh, available as an option and in order to come into the youth court, um, the participant has to agree, their parents have to agree, um, the, the most importantly to me is the prosecutor has to um, agree, and um, so there's always that level of protection with the prosecutor as far as what cases get sent to youth court and what cases don't. Um, Youth courts in this instance under this enabling statute are only dealing with infractions. So right now um, the youth traffic courts deal with driving infractions. So 16 and 17 year olds come in, whether they have um, a negligent driving in the second degree or a speeding ticket or something like that. Um, they come in and participate in the process, learn from their peers, um, are for lack of better word, judged and sentenced by their peers. Um, and it's really an opportunity for them to learn in a, an environment where they'll listen. Um, I think that, that for those who, who spent a lot of time with teens, that's often the issue. Um, so, so as far as um, the jurisdictional issue, there's no misdemeanors coming into youth court. There's no crimes coming into youth court. These are all infractions. Um, and, and the goal of SB 5640 is that we want to hear all civil infractions, not just uh, criminal or traffic infractions. So for example, um, a minor in possession of tobacco could come through youth court. What that might look like is the, um, you know, say the the infraction gets filed in Spokane Municipal Court, um, which is a court who's looking to, um, which is a court that's looking to create a youth court of its own. Um, so say that the infraction gets filed there, and then, um, you know, if, if the prosecutor felt it was appropriate and the participant opted in, they could send that to a, a youth court in, um, that exists. And then um, the participant would come in, there would be a student judge and jury, um, and they would analyze this 
fact pound, what happened, why did this happen, and get to the root of the problem, and then make some sort of um, sentencing recommendation, um, usually community service in a paper, um, driving class, um, smoking cessation class. Um, and so the studies have shown that the recidivism rates are much lower for youth courts. Um, I guess I'm rambling at this point and I'm running out of time. So I'll let Terry Cooper um, finish. Uh, good morning, um, Madam Chair. Terry Cooper, I am the Cheney uh, Municipal Court Administrator and Commissioner, um, as well as the President of Washington State Association of Youth Courts. Um, Washington State Association of Youth Courts was created in uh, 2008. I'm one of the founding members working with Margaret Fisher and some others. Um, this, uh, as was stated, um, a solution without a problem. Uh, we weren't looking to solve a problem. We were looking to expand more good things that are already happening. So this creates an opportunity for um, more youth to come in. Uh, one, to address um, the jurisdictional issue. Uh, when um, I first thought of bringing this bill forward, it ha we had no intention of taking jurisdiction away from juvenile courts, absolutely not. What we were looking to do uh, in the idea of expanding courts in Eastern Washington, in particular, Cheney being the only one, uh, and so there's a lack of civic education, that opportunity for students to engage in the um, involvement of, um, you know, with their peers, uh, for those students that are coming through to also understand more about the court system. And so, um, that, that was never the intention, it's still not the intention. We had a great discussion yesterday. I would absolutely entertain whatever language we needed to put in there, some caveat that would say no, nothing in this bill was intended to change original jurisdiction. Um, transferring to adult, cur uh, adult courts, uh, again, no intention to do that other than if um, we were to have some youth court set up, say in a Spokane Municipal Court and Spokane Juvenile Court wanted to participate, they could, they would have the option. Nothing forces them to, requires them to. Um, and so, but we're hoping that uh, we can collaborate more. There are three types of models. Uh, one is criminal diversion, which is already allowed in juvenile courts. This would allow those juvenile courts to also have civil um, infractions come into their youth courts that already exist. Right now they don't have that option. It's only criminal, so this is even lesser. Um, then it's a student court model, which we're working with uh, Spokane, um, reaching out to District 81 and others to allow those uh, that student court uh, to be developed. And then of course these youth traffic courts. Last year you uh, had legislation that included transit tickets. This is just an expansion of that, so not just transit, but all civil infractions. So crosswalk, tobacco, uh, you know, those minor things, but it's more of an opportunity to engage these students in education opportunity to work with their peers. Uh, that was the intention. Um, we, like I said, had a great discussion yesterday, and I think we all agreed that we can land in a place that this could go forward and create opportunities for expansion of youth courts without changing jurisdiction. Um, any questions, and I think that's all I had. Great, thank you for your work, and thank you for working together to, to ensure that civic engagement um, would happen. Um, really quickly, do we have a simple, straightforward questions for this panel? Representative Clipper. For the Cheney courts, is it possible to put in the language, go Eags? <laughs> Yeah, Thank I, you, Representative. I, I and uh, that will conclude our study session today. Thank you, everyone.